Advanced Accounting 2. This chapter is on consolidation of non wholly owned subsidiaries. Topic 1 acts as an overview for non wholly owned subsidiaries. This happens when your company didn't purchase 100% of the company that they acquired control over. And we need to account for that. But first, I have to laugh, uh, of course in a kind way, as we will be venturing down this road of consolidation of companies for the next few weeks. This week, we will continue to discuss factors of consolidating an entity at acquisition, similar to what we did last week. In future weeks, after the group case submission and term test, we will continue down the acquisition timeline to account for a company we acquire after acquisition. So what happens after we bought the company and it's been a few years? Hint, those fair value differentials will not go away for a while. I can give you this insight because it circles back to why the heck a company would purchase less than 100% of another company, especially when all of this additional accounting will need to happen, will need to occur. Um, that's what a student said. Wait, she actually loudly exclaimed a few years ago. Her exact words were, why can't they just buy the whole effing thing? <laughs> I, I can relate. The accounting for this can be frustrating at times, but it brings up a really great point because a company sometimes can't afford to purchase 100% of the other company, or sometimes the seller won't sell all of it. For example, many founders are partial to keeping part of the company they spent many years building, uh, the company they risked and sacrificed a lot for. Strategically speaking, your company deemed that this acquisition made the most sense and now it's finance's job to account for it. Who the here got angry when I said the word strategically and thought, this ain't strat class? Well, that's also the faces of the students um, when I explained this in class. Uh, but the thing is, we are not accounting and strat and marketing and you know all the other courses in silos. We are business. We are in business school. We are creating business. We are looking for shareholder or stakeholder value add. So, you know, it's not necessarily always like, oh, you know, um, acquisitions did this, now account for it. Not necessarily. So oftentimes accounting and finance have a seat at the table with the bankers, the lawyers, the deal makers to ensure the substance and the form of the transaction achieves the company's objectives, uh, both from a substance and a form point of view. So as we continue to go through this course, as we've done with previous courses, please continue asking yourself, why are we doing these things? And what does this look like? Um, tie it back to accounting, but also to strategy, to finance, to laws, integrate these things as we are not operating in silos where there is one accountant, one strap person, and we all kind of do our own thing. Rather, we are working together to achieve our business objectives. Uh, and notice how I say objectives. It, our objective may be to operate, op, optimize net profits, um, but there may be other key performance indicators to manage. In any scenario, understanding how to communicate current operations and forecast a company's trajectory using the language of business, accounting, will be a value add for your career and add to the contributions that you can make to your teams. Okay. So, if an investor purchases enough of an investee to control, but not 100% of the company, the minority position, the part they didn't buy, the minority position remaining is referred to as non-controlling interest or NCI. This means when the parent company consolidates their financial statements, it cannot include all of the subsidiaries' net assets and net income on their consolidated financial statements. So now I mean I mean that in in the terms that you know they squish on all of the subsidiaries' assets and liabilities and income, but then they need to kind of portion out this part because they squish on all of the assets and liabilities and income because that's what they control and they need to reflect the economic reality that they control all of the subsidiary but then they need to also carve out a piece of the bottom and show demonstrate separately that um that there's a portion that is not their company the nci so 
its NCI typically sits um, as a credit balance on the statement of financial position uh, under the equity portion. And the NCI, um, the non-controlling interest for the income portion of the company, sits on the statement of financial performance at the end. So it's a carve out. We still include all of the, um, the company that we acquires assets and liabilities and income, but then we carve out a portion and say, not our portion, NCI. Okay, we're gonna get into the mechanics of that in a little bit later. But first I wanna discuss the methods, because we have a few. There are four methods of measuring NCI impact on consolidated financial statements. The proportionate consolidation method, which is required for certain joint arrangements. We'll see that in a, um, in a much later chapter towards the end of the course. The parent company method is no longer used under GAAP, so it's no longer used under IFRS or ASPE. We have the identifiable net assets method, and we have the fair value enterprise method. Both of the identifiable net assets method, the INA, and the fair value enterprise method, the FVE, both of these are permitted under IFRS and ASPE. So they're currently both GAAP permitted. We will be going through both the INA and the fair value enterprise methods as a part of this course um, in, a subsequent, in a subsequent video. Um, for consolidations, um, we will be, if you're not, if it's not specified, if I haven't specified whether or not we're looking at INA or FBE, the FBE will be your default method. Okay, time for a question. Which of the following consolidation methods is not currently permitted under Canadian GAAP, meaning it's not currently permitted under IFRS or ASPE? Is it A, identifiable net assets, B, fair value enterprise, C, proportionate consolidation, or D, parent company method? Well, if you said D, you are correct. So we're gonna be looking at INA and FBE in subsequent videos because you absolutely um, must use those, one of those four consolidation methods in this course and in Canada. And then C is also currently used and that's used under certain circumstances in joint operations, which we'll be discussing in a much later chapter. So process of elimination, uh, which of the following consolidation methods is not currently used under GAAP? And that is D, the parent company method. All right, awesome work, everybody. I will see you in the next video.